Hey everybody, so this video is on lateral inhibition. Uh, you might want to go back and check one of my previous videos on the structure of the retina if I say things like horizontal cells and receptor cells and bipolar cells, which I will, uh, because I'm trying to keep the video short so I can't get to all of the material in one quick video. So, here we go. Things you need to remember, bipolar cells, receptor cells, bipolar cells. Uh, did I Receptor cells, bipolar cells, horizontal cells. Okay, all right. So let's take a really, really, really simplified version of this, the, the top two layers of your eyes, okay? So we're going to look here. All of these are going to be receptor cells, these little dots with uh, tails. And down here, these, are, these circles with tails are going to be your bipolar cells, all right? Now I've drawn up here a rough version of what's called the Herman grid. Basically you have boxes of black uh, separated by little troughs of white. Now, lateral inhibition occurs when cells inhibit neighboring cells. So basically what happens is, is when light comes in, the signal gets sent onto the bipolar cell and the horizontal cell inhibits neighboring bipolar cells to uh, relative, and the amount that it inhibits those bipolar cells is relative to the amount of signal coming into the receptor cells. So let's say, for simplicity's sake, that, so you can see here we got A, receptor cells A, B, C, D, E, and I've got an F and a G over here, but you can't see those very well. But, so you can see that A through E are all in the white troughs, okay? So let's say that they are getting the maximum illumination. So they're getting values of 100. So you can see right there. A through E, 100. Well, G and F, F and G, uh, are in the dark. So they're getting less uh, illumination, 10. Okay. Now, let's say, just for the sake of this example, that the inhibition rate is 10%. So if A is getting illuminated with an intensity of 100. It will, the, it's, the horizontal cell attached to it will inhibit its neighboring cells at a rate of 10%. So 10% of 100 is 10. So A, the input from A will lead to the inhibition of neighboring cells at a rate of 10%. So I'm going to adjust the camera. Sorry if this makes anybody sick. So A, okay, it's going to inhibit E at a rate of 10%, okay? So let's focus really quickly then on what happens to E because it's right smack in the middle. It's getting inhibited from A, from B, from C, and from D, okay? So let's look at, let's look at E, okay? So remember, E is getting input of 100, okay? But it's getting inhibited by D, B, A, and C, which all are getting input of 100 themselves, 10% of which is 10. So E, which had an initial activation of, 10, of 100, is getting inhibited by 10 from A, by another 10 from B, by another 10 from D, and by another 10 from C. Now, in order to figure out how much E will ultimately, or the bipolar cell for E will ultimately respond, we have to basically add up the initial activation and, and subtract from it all the inhibition. So we know that E is getting input of 100. And it's being inhibited by 10 from A, B, C, and D. That means that E is getting, has 100 minus 10 for A down to 90, minus another 10 for B down to 80, minus another 10 for C down to 70, and minus another 10 for D down to 60. So E, it's, it's ending the ending activation in bipolar cell E is 60. Or, uh, now let's look at one that isn't getting inhibited that much. <clears throat> so let's look at B. Okay, now I've added H over here. Okay, now H is in the white too, so it's going to get the full uh, intensity 
100, okay? Which means it's going to inhibit, inhibit at a rate of 10. E is right next to it, so and it's getting full intensity, so it's going to inhibit at the rate of 10. But G and F, they're both in the dark. Their input is both 10. So they're only going to and 10% of 10 is 1. So they're only going to inhibit at, at an amount of 1. So we take we look at what happens to B. B initially has an input of 100 minus 10 from E minus 1 from F minus 10 from H minus 1 from G. So 100 minus 10, 90. Minus 1, 89. Minus 10 more, 79. Minus 1 more, 78. So B then would seem brighter because it's, it's ending activation is 78. B would seem brighter than E because it's in getting inhibited less. So when we say lateral inhibition, we mean the bipolar cell is being inhibited by cells that are lateral to it. It's not being inhibited from above or below. It's being inhibited by cells that are lateral to it. Okay, so when you look at the, the Hermann grid then and you plot the full Hermann grid, because the Hermann, the, illu the illusion that comes from the Hermann grid is that if you look at the squares you'll see gray spots at the intersections between the white troughs. Well the reason for that is that process we just looked at. So now if we look at the activation of uh, D, A, E, C, and B, it would look like this. So the center, the area of the intersection, has an activation of 60. It's E. B has an, inter has an activation of 78 because it's, only, it's, on, it's in one of the troughs. Well, A would work the same way as B, D would work the same way as B, and C would work the same way as B. So the troughs would each amount to 78. E, the middle, would amount to 60. So the center, the intersection, is getting inhibited more. And so its net activation, or uh, its ending activation, is smaller. So it appears dimmer. All right. Uh, I hope that this video helps. Let me know if it does, uh, or if it doesn't. If you have any more questions, be sure to send them my way. Take it easy.